Hello boys and girls and welcome back to our second installment of Wednesday activities. Um, we are going to be starting a triptych today and a triptych is an artwork that has three parts and the theme of our trip triptych is our scapes. Um, we're going to start with a cityscape. The next installment will be a landscape and finally we'll be adding a seascape. Um, these are all pictures of the outside, but they're all things that uh, are very, very different. A cityscape is filled with a lot of built structures and geometric shapes. Landscapes vary according to the land. Some of them are very flat, like farmland, and some of them are very um, mountainous and have lots of jagged lines like these, um, like this picture of the Sierra, Sierra Mountains in California. And finally, seascapes, or in our case, I added the Great Lakes there too, because they're the closest thing we have to the sea that we might have seen before, always include a lot of flat space in the background where the water meets the sky and lots and lots of colors as the, as the water also reflects the sky. So we're gonna be starting off with the cityscape. Now, um, I don't know if you've been to a lot of big cities, but you might notice that some of the buildings tower really high and then some of them are very low to the ground. And there's always a lot of hustle and bustle. There's a lot of vehicles and a lot of people. Um, there's different modes of transportation. There's trains and um, there are cars and there's also even scooters and, and trolleys and things like that. So to make our triptych, we're actually going to divide the paper into three parts. I'm gonna show you how to do that, and then we're going to get started on the cityscape. Our preferred media, that means the art supply, the preferred art supply for the cityscape is going to be colored pencils um, because they are very detail-oriented and we're gonna be drawing lots of details in our city. And if you have colored pencils, get those out. If not, you can use a crayon. Um, but you're also going to need the flare pen from your art kit. You're going to need a pencil and you're going to need an eraser. A ruler will come in helpful too because you can use it to help you fold the paper. Um, so let's begin. First off, get out a blank white sheet of paper. If your paper is drawing paper, then it will be probably be um, 9 inches by 12 inches. This, um, but copy paper that comes from the copy machine is gonna be a little bit smaller. You need to divide this paper into thirds. There's a couple different ways that you can do that. Um, one way to be really, really sure is to put down a ruler and then measure it into thirds. Now, if your paper is 12 inches from end to end, that you know that if you mark at four and then mark again at eight, it should work. Um, another technique I use is using a burrito fold like this. Um, if you're if you're good at estimating, they might not come out exactly the same. But if you if you want to be sure, be sure to divide it up by um, by thirds. And right here is where the paper is going to fold. So you're going to pull it up to the second line and make sure that this edge is all lined up, and then crease it and then the other one goes in the opposite direction. We will eventually use all three sides of this paper and so when you're done with your cityscape today you can keep this safe inside your art folder or if you have another designated spot for these artworks you can set them aside in there. But for now we're just going to be working on the top of the page on the cityscape. To start using your ruler um, you can take the ruler and place it on the fold. It's a little hard to see there. Put it right here and then make a line and that's gonna be the very first horizon line in your picture. A horizon line is lines that designate where the ground and the sky come together. So in this silhouette picture, this is a picture of the Renaissance Center in Detroit and some of the other buildings along the Detroit River, you can see that there's a horizon line right here. But sometimes there's more than one horizon. There's one off in the background as well. And you could almost consider the tops of the buildings another version of the horizon. 
If you look really closely, you can see that there's um, little flags and antennas and things that you can add to your artwork when you create today. Okay, take some time and add a lot of details to your work. Some things that I like to do is I go on to Google and I search images of my favorite cities. So if you search the word skyline, you can type in the name of a city and you can see different skylines if you do a search on that. So you could, you could look up familiar cities like Detroit, you could look up, um, or Chicago, maybe you've been to Chicago, but you can also go further out and um, see cities from all over the world. You can look at Dubai for a brand new city, or you could look at London for a very old one. Each, um, each era has its own architecture style and its buildings changed over the years. But if you want to keep it simple and imaginative, you can just use geometric shapes as well. When we talk about cities, usually um, man or built structures have more of a geometric look to them versus when you get out to landscapes and everything has been honed by nature. So it's very organic. And when you're talking about natural shapes, we're often talking about organic shapes. Another thing to think about is your overlapping shapes and varying the height of the buildings. And then after you create the building, you're going to have to think about what the front of the building is going to look like. What is the facade? Uh, a facade, F-A-C-A-D-E. That means the front of a building. So what are your facades going to look like? Um, in the city, buildings have more than one floor. They're multi-story because you, you have to build them tall so that you can fit more things in a smaller amount of space. So you can divide it up into different sections. If you are interested in making a building look more three-dimensional, you can use perspective. And to do that, you start off with a line up the middle and then you can make it lines that angle away towards the top, like this, and then one like this. That can run right to the edge. This line is going to go straight down, and that will give your, your um, building a more three-dimensional look. But when you put the buildings on the building, or when you put the windows on that building, they are also going um, the same direction as the as the roof line like this so they go like this and then you could do some vertical lines in between just like that voila a 3d building you could put an antenna on it you could put a second floor sometimes there's a little people like to put little rooftop gardens up here restaurants people dine on top of these of, of these buildings or if they are living in them, they might have a little patio up there, all sorts of things. You could draw um, a cloud in the sky. You could draw vehicles. You could draw people down at the street level. One thing I do recommend is when you're drawing the buildings, um, think about where you want your signage. On skyscrapers and big buildings, when I notice, uh, when I have kids draw them, sometimes they write big words all the way across the building, bank building, toy store. When you're going to be designing these buildings, make the sign part of the facade, but don't make it the entire facade. It kind of ruins the illusion of it being a big building because remember, these buildings have many, many floors. All right, so you're gonna take some time. You can use a ruler, you can draw freehand, but you're gonna continue to design and draw buildings until you run out of space along the top of the page. You can include vehicles, you can include water towers, you can do antennas. A lot of times on older buildings, they might have a little water tower on, on it like this. After you've designed your buildings, you um, are going to be using the flare pen from your art kit and now it is time to trace. So trace over all your lines. I'm gonna use a ruler for that. You can, um, you can make a choice whether you do it freehand or do it with a ruler, but I like, I like the assurance that the ruler gives me that my lines are not gonna stray. And then after you outline everything with the ruler, 
you should, or without it, you're going to use your eraser and then erase out all the smudges like this. For the cityscape, the preferred coloring method is colored pencil. If you don't have colored pencils available to you, use crayons. Colored pencils are gonna be a better choice because they're very precise and you're able to sharpen them and get a lot of nuance in the colors on this highly detailed drawing. We're not gonna be using colored pencils for the other, for the other parts of this, of this drawing that we're gonna be doing later. If you need gray and you don't have a gray colored pencil, you can really um, just color it with black but color very lightly like this. And then if you need a darker color, you can color it a little bit darker. So at the beginning, you're just gonna start with carefully drawing pencils, uh, a pencil drawing of your cityscape. You can include little parkland, you can include trees, water towers, stadiums, all sorts of things, little people down at the street level. Next step, outline everything in the flare pen. And then after you've outlined everything in flare, you should go over it with the eraser and erase out all the smudge marks, just like this. And then after you've done that, you can go ahead and add all of your color. When you're done with the cityscape, put it away in your um, art folder or another safe place